All right, Dark Secrets of Bali Exposed. Now, I wanted to make this video for a long time, but I've been a little scared to post it while I was in Bali because of all the weird things that I've heard. For example, being kicked out of the country for posting on social media is not unheard of. Um, there has been a few people that have done things like posting without their shirt. Guys will take a picture of themselves without a shirt on and they'll post, they'll do that in front of a sacred temple or a mountain, a sacred mountain, religious mountain, which is absolutely ignorant and disrespectful and illegal, but it has happened. So I wanted to wait till I got out of the country to make this video. Here are a bunch of things that you might make you uncomfortable. They might make you uncomfortable if you go to Bali, so you should know about them. Now, let me just say that Bali has been one of the most beautiful experiences I've ever had. And I love the country. I love the people and everything about it. And every country has its problems. But if you're thinking about traveling there, you probably should be aware of these things that I'm going to talk about. There's about six of them. Okay, so let's go. My buddy Killian is going to help us out, right? Okay. So the first one, is the country completely free? Like how free is Bali? There was a while back, about a year ago, there was big news in Bali that the governor, one of the governors or one of the elected officials didn't want to have unmarried couples having sex. It was, he wanted to make that illegal. This goes, this law, go. there's something in their constitution or their laws that go back to the 1900s when they were a colonial state and they were under um, oppression of the Dutch and this got weaved into their um their constitution or their law somehow and a governor recently wanted to bring back this law or make it into effect which was a big hubbub it was a big thing and um it's not for it's not for foreigners so foreigners got really scared because they thought it would be very dangerous to go if you were unmarried because you could be arrested for having sex but it wasn't it's only for locals and um citizens living in the country but that is a huge deal. Like that is a serious violation of rights and freedoms that I think, I think, and it's unsettling. So there is some backwards thinking in the country by, and these are people in parliament and in that, that make laws in their country. And it's just a little, it makes you uncomfortable. So I don't know if that's actually come into effect. You'd have to Google it, but, um, there was big concern around that. The government all also only tends to want a certain type of citizen. Like they made, um, they there was a quote that they don't want any rice eating, banana leaf eating people in the country, which means now the, the, the banana leaf rice eating meal is a very, very cheap meal. Like it's, you can buy it for pennies. And uh, what, what basically they meant was they don't want um, poor people in the country coming into the country. They only want rich tourists, which is kind of, you know, it's kind of weird because people who made Bali, what it is, are um, hikers and um, low budget travelers that posted about the country on social media and made it big in the first place. So to only want now rich, uh, certain type of people to come into the country was, it was a little weird, right? Now. Oh. So that's, so the freedoms is a little wonky. Uh, it's just a little, makes me a little uncomfortable. So you'd have to just be aware of their laws and don't break any of their laws. For example, the shirt, not wearing a shirt is against the law. Other than the beach, if you're driving without a shirt, that's against the law. And, it, and the Balinese find it extremely offensive and they will pull you off to the side of the road and either arrest you, fine you, or might even ask you for money. Some There is a bit of corruption. This leads into my next one, corruption, cops asking for money. There has been incidents and stories of cops asking foreigners for money. Um, it's And never happened to me. I was there eight months, never happened. I never had a problem, but I never went anywhere without my helmet. Good thing too, because I actually got in a scooter accident. Uh, you can see the, the scar there in Thailand, or no, Philippines, I broke my collarbone. So make sure you wear your helmet, you should be wearing it anyway. And you'll see in some of my previous videos, I wasn't always wearing my helmet or my straps, which was really stupid. But so make sure if you can get a helmet, get one, right? And if you do happen to get pulled over by the police and they ask you for money, the best thing you can do is call your rental scooter company. They'll take care of it and fix it for you. The guy I rented from said, 
He said three or four times, if you get in trouble with the police, call me, call me, call me, and he'll come fix it. They won't bother you if you do that. And if you really are stuck and you can't get a hold of your rental company, you better make sure you get a good rental company, not some sketchy one. If you can't get a hold of anyone you, and you have to give them some money, just say, this is all the money I have. Give them something. This is all the money I have. And they, sh- they probably will let you go without incident. It's better than having them take your license or your driver's license or your passport. So there's that as well. Okay, now this one really bothered me. This next one, it was really, really um, upsetting to me. Coming from uh, North America is the recycling. There's no recycling programs really in the country. Um, the mentality, they're about 30, 40 years behind when it comes to this. There's not even a word in Balinese for recycling. I tried to use Google Translator and all that came up in their language was garbage pail. And I showed this to someone I was asking them, says, did you have this? Do you have this? And he's like, yeah, yeah, right there. And he pointed to a garbage pail. So um, they, it is really feels really weird to be throwing you know, plastic bottles and everything and just into the garbage. Like it's, if you come from a country where it recycles, it's going to feel really dirty. You're going to feel weird about it. So your stomach might turn a bit. So it's a little, it's a little nasty. So they, the country, the pollution and recycling, this leads to my next one is pollution is getting to be a real problem in the country. And you'll see it in really congested cities in Bali around Changu, um, especially the Seminac beach and Kutu beach. It's really congested area, a lot of people, a lot of garbage, and there isn't a lot of, you'll see garbage on the sides of the street. Uh, there was a, there, it, it was quite common to go surfing. It's quite common to see it when I was surfing in Seminac Beach, the objects would hit me in the leg and I, I'd be freaked out. What is that? It would be a chip bag or it'd be a garbage bag. Um, now this isn't to say that every beach in Bali has garbage. I'm just talking about two beaches. There's only like two or three beaches where it congregates. The rest of Bali, the beaches are pristine, they're beautiful, they're out of this world. Like that's why so many people go to Bali, but I'm just saying there is a problem in certain beaches and uh, you'll get grossed out. You'll get grossed out uh, and they, if they don't do something about it, something bad is going to happen with their ecosystem. Um, it's killing fish, it's going to end up in your food and things like that. And um, I've even seen walking down the beach on low tide, you see all the garbage that gets stuck along the beach for miles along Senac Beach. I if I have some video footage, I'll post it in this video. I think I took some pictures, but anyway, it was, you'll see it. Um, again, it's not everywhere, but um, it's a big, it's a bit of a thing. Okay, next, um, smoking. If you are a non-smoker or if you're allergic or sensitive to secondhand smoke, which that's me. I used to be a smoker way back in the day, like 20 years ago. And I quit. Uh, good thing I did because I'm now I'm disgusted by smoking and I'm very sensitive to it. I can smell it a mile away as well. And you'll everywhere, if you're sitting at a stoplight on your scooter, you will be in a sea of secondhand smoke just will wash over you. It's really appalling. It gets really gross and it's everywhere. Restaurants, sidewalks, outside, beaches, you can't get away from it. You will, you will gag on it everywhere you go. Even uh, restaurants, not in restaurants, but if they have an outdoor patio, which a lot of restaurants do, you'll definitely be smoking. They're smoking in outdoor restaurants and it will just hit you um, and it makes it really uncomfortable. So that's that was a big, big one that uh, really bothered me. Okay, now uh, the next one I'm gonna talk about is um, really, could be really upsetting for some people, okay? It was upsetting for me to get used to. I was hard. This was hard for me to get used to. Uh, now I've seen homeless people before. We have lots of homelessness in here in Canada. You see it all over the streets. I see teenagers, uh, young teenagers, and it's it's hard. It's heartbreaking to see. However, in Bali, it gets much worse. The homelessness can um, goes all it gets very young. You'll have five, six year olds, six year olds, five year olds, six year olds with a brother and sister um, hand asking for money at the intersection when you're stopped on your scooter. There'll be children in the busy intersection with like 500 cars weaving around cars asking for money. They're disheveled, they're dirty, they have no shoes. They're asking for money and um, it's heartbreaking. So if you don't have any cash on you uh, and there are little girls asking for money, it's really, 
heartbreaking to have to say no i don't have anything on me yet luckily I most i think like 99 percent of the time i would always have something and i give them something every time because i just couldn't couldn't stand it that might be upsetting to some people it will get to you i've seen mothers with their babies uh begging um and uh so it's a it's a third world country and there is poverty and it'll really hit you in the face so that's something to be aware of now um next one this one took me by surprise um the rent rent increases can happen randomly at any time i mean in a heartbeat i was i my rent was coming up um on maybe month three in about a week my landlord says hey the rent is now you know x amount of dollars and i was like oh okay wait a minute we agreed on x amount of dollars every month i think the increase was going to be about 50 us a month which was not going to break my budget, but it could for a lot of other people. Um, agreements, they don't really, they do contracts. One place I rented had a contract. This place didn't do contracts. Uh, try to get a contract, a rental agreement. If you can, there's a lot of places that rent that don't bother with contracts. And that's what happens when you don't sign contracts. It's very common for rent increases to happen on a dime. Um, and the lady went on to say, well, Look, I'll, if you want to pay the extra money, you can stay. If you don't, I have a friend who wants to pay X amount of money. I was like, oh, okay. So you got somebody who's willing to pay more money and you want to kick me out, which is totally illegal in my country, in Canada, but they could kick you out like that and um, if if you and, and rent it out for somebody with more money and it happens. So that was, I was horrified because it may sound like a small thing to some people, but that's a big deal. Uh, especially like just being able to raise rent or kick people out without notice, without any legal justification. Like it's just, it's a real violation of human rights, I think. So that's something to be aware of, right? Yes. There's one more. Now this one um, was again, took me by surprise. You should be aware of it. Certain medications are completely illegal that may be legal in your country, but they're illegal in Bali or they're, they're a controlled substance, or you need to see a psychiatrist to get a prescription. So uh, medication like say Zoloft, or um, medications that treat depression, anxiety, OCD, anxiety disorders, <clears throat> anything around there, they, a lot of them are controlled substances and you just can't have a family doctor write you a prescription. I take a medication for the same medication for like 20 years and it's for OCD and um, it's I think I take it's sertraline anyways that um, I couldn't get a prescription for more than 10 days so I had to go to a hospital uh, see a psychiatrist there which is very easy to do but I had to pay a fee you have to pay it was like I think $50 around $50 US for a doctor visit and it was another 150 to 100 dollars to see a psychiatrist they just write up prescription and then you're fine. Um, and they can only do 30 days. You have to keep coming back. So there, you can't just get repeats. So that's a bit of annoying. If you're on certain medications, um, you, there has been stories of people having those medications in their bag and then they get stopped coming into the country. Um, the medication was even taken away from them um, because it was a controlled substance. I heard that, I read about it, but I never had a problem. I did have a lot of medication on me but I had all my doctor's prescriptions and I had a letter just in case and I had the original bottle that came in. So those are things that you might um, find a little annoying or upsetting when if you go to Bali. But as I said earlier, I love Bali. It's a beautiful country. I had an amazing time, amazing experience. And these things are kind of a small thing, but it is good to be aware of them. Um, just, you know, so you don't get yourself in any entanglements. So hopefully that uh, you enjoyed this video. If you did, just give me a follow, give me a like, set your notifications on for the next video, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, bye for now, guys. Talk to you later.